Hello, hello, hello. I am just getting set up. So we'll wait for some people to come on. And then we'll get going. I'm a, I'm a minute early. Usually I'm like 10, 15 minutes late because I don't do this professionally. Well, I do do it professionally, but um, I just want to make sure I have everything that I need and I don't have to go off camera to get it, but inevitably I forget something. So welcome. I'm Hopefully I'm going to catch people. I have it at a weird angle. Hello, Lori. You have a really awesome name, Lori, Lori, and you spell it right. You're not like one of those L-A-U-R-I-E people. I mean, I have nothing against them. It's just spelled wrong. So I like my name. I didn't used to. I wanted to be named Lauren. So I used to add an N to the end of Lori. So it looked cool, but I've learned to accept and I'm okay with it actually. I hardly ever meet little people named Lori though. So when I do, I kind of flip out because it's not, I think it died in the 69 is when I was born. So welcome. We'll just give people a little bit of time to join us. You are joining me uh, um, to do a pressure cooker workshop. This is something I've typically done in person and <laughs> can't do anything in person anymore. So we're gonna do it as a virtual workshop, which is great because I have a lot of people who haven't been able to travel to my house to do the workshop. The only difference is um, usually I have everybody help me cook. So we'll just wing it tonight. So we'll give some more people. I know I had a couple of my team members trying to get, hey, Miss Callie, I haven't seen you for ages. Well, I haven't seen anybody for ages, but anyway, welcome, welcome. We're just waiting for some more people to get on before I get started. Can you guys all hear me good? No problem there. Uh, one day I'll invest in a professional microphone, but I just do this for fun, more or less, and I'm not quite to the professional streaming status. One day, but you know, you have to have to make more money to spend more money or spend more money to make more money, whichever. But this, don't worry, even though I am a Pampered Chef consultant and I will be talking a lot about the quick cooker from Pampered Chef, this does apply to other pressure cookers. I even have my friend's Instant Pot here. Instant Pot, Instant Pot, I always say that wrong. So that's gonna confuse me because we call ours the quick cooker and the Instant Pot and then there's a whole bunch of other brands out there that I've used at my workshops. Hey Mike, how are you bud? And Shirlene, she wanted to come to my quick cooker workshop oh, last month and it didn't work out. So I'm glad that I we're doing everything virtual now. Um, I thought about trying this on Zoom and I might do it again because I know there's a lot of people out there. A lot of my well, a small number of my customers aren't on Facebook. So, but since 100% of my parties, typically Mike and Charlene are two of the only people I've done parties, actual cooking parties for, but that's okay. Um, I don't mind that. And I love that both of them asked me to do low carb keto um, cooking parties. So welcome, welcome. We're just waiting for a few more people to get on and then we will get the party started. How is everyone doing with their, um, social distancing or hey Rhonda, how are you so um yeah i'm home alone all the time anyway so this is lame because i kind of look i look forward to those opportunities to go to lunch once a week with my mom and go so with my friends and go out to dinner and obviously i go out too much so how many of you are eating at home all the time now and I hope that we've brought some people on that this will benefit because I talk to a lot of people that still have their Instant Pot that they got for Christmas in the box from last year. So hopefully we'll inspire you. Oh, Rhonda still has to work. I know my husband still, I mean, I work from home already. So this wasn't a big change for me, um, but I'm not doing live cooking parties but my husband still works for ABF Trucking, so he says they're busier than they've ever been, and he doesn't think that they're shipping toilet paper, but go figure. Let's see, more home cooking for sure. Well, one thing that's great about home cooking is you know what goes into your food. Um, two, it's usually a lot less expensive. Um, last night, my son and his girlfriend came up. I haven't seen him for like a month, so I told him we'd get takeout, carry out, whatever they're calling it now. Um, from Red Robin. I do not remember it being that expensive when we go to the restaurant, but it just seemed like, a, hey, Jill, welcome. 
And um, I just find that cooking from home one is a lot healthier. You can control the ingredients that are going into it, especially if you have a special diet. If you're eating low carb, um, you can get really creative. Charlene is a pro at that. She is always posting amazing things that she's making and she does low carb, so that's awesome. And I know that Mr. Mike has a smoker that I would love one of those, but that's on my wish list after I get all the pamper chest stuff. But so you are eating healthier at home, but sometimes it gets boring. You start to cook the same thing over and over. So looks like we have enough people that I'll go ahead and get started. Um, if I do this, it's because I can't read the itty bitty phone. One of these days I need to get a big monitor and I don't have to worry about it, but welcome. We are going to be talking about pressure cookers. Now pressure cookers are an amazing tool. If you haven't really used yours a whole lot, I'm gonna hopefully open up and inspire you to, to use it for other things. Pressure cookers, the reason people love it is it gives you that taste of a slow cooked, uh, hey Carrie, um, a slow cooked meal like you would do in a crock pot, but in like a lot less time, 70% faster. And how many of you have come home and thought, crap, I've done that where I haven't turned on the slow cooker and everything's just sitting in there. Or my personal favorite, I left the thing, the meat in the freezer and it's hard as a rock. No worries, that's what's amazing about a pressure cooker. So hopefully if you haven't discovered that, I will inspire you. I did have someone at one of my workshops that the only thing they've done so far are hard boiled eggs, which is awesome because I can cook uh, two dozen eggs in mine um, because I have the racks for it. So we'll go ahead, I'm gonna go through, I wanna go ahead and get started on one of the recipes because one of the things that you fall into with a pressure cooker is you have to wait for it to build up pressure and therefore I don't want you all to just be waiting. So we'll go ahead and get started and then I'll explain as we go. I'm gonna be doing two recipes for you tonight. Um, one could be adjusted a little bit, surely to be low carb. It does include rice, which I don't eat, but my husband does. So we're gonna be doing a chicken teriyaki and rice and you definitely can find substitutes for that. And then for everyone who came to the workshop, whether virtual or uh, live or replay, you can contact me and I will send you out an ebook. It's a 23 page ebook that has some great tips and tricks and things about your quick, quick cooker. This is one of my favorite. It is a conversion chart, which will take you from a slow cooker time to a quick cooker time or from the oven and stove if you have a recipe and tell you what, tells you what to do and then even some recipes with pasta. So, and we're gonna be doing a recipe with pasta. The other recipe we're gonna be doing tonight is a three cheese macaroni and cheese, and no, it is definitely not low carb, but it is the bomb. And something that I like to do, there's only my husband and I at home. I know some of you have little ones that are driving you crazy. Week two, you can do it. And so the three cheese mac and cheese is amazing because it makes a whole lot, and my husband loves leftovers, so this is one of my favorites to do that he can then, pack up. It's just that mm, comfort food that you need. So between the ch chicken teriyaki and rice, which I we when we did this, I just cooked me up some cauliflower rice to go with the chicken teriyaki. And instead of using, um, the recipe does call for honey. There are quite a few sugar substitutes out there, but I won't go into that. Hey, Debbie and Midge is here. Hey, Midge has a party going on. I hope some people from your party, she is a consultant on my team. So I'm excited. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna go ahead and start the recipes. And then as we go, I will get into um, maintenance, how a quick cooker or pressure cooker works, how to clean it. A lot of people are a little like, how do I clean this? So we'll get into that. And then of course, I'll explain all the amazing accessories that Pampered Chef has created for any six quart qu quick cooker which is most standard um, pressure cookers. My daughter did bring over her Instant Pot when I did mine. <laughs> Uh, one of my workshops, she forgot to mention it was only a four quart. Like who seriously has a four quart instant pot? Even my husband and I don't have a four quart has, um, instant pot. But just to kind of give you an idea, I'm gonna even explain how easy it is, look how beautiful that is, to make a cake in your pressure cooker. Like seriously, it is the bomb. It is the most densely uh, ooh, delicious cake. I'm even gonna show you, just to kind of give you an idea. Like it is beautiful. It, like, can you see how dense that cake is? Oh, and this is made from a cake mix, believe it or not. And I do have some fun 
low carb recipes that can be done in it, but I just wanted to show you the convenience of a cake mix. This is only half the cake mix, so I'll show you how to get that ready and prep to put in your pressure cooker. And I thought, I have a friend up the street who it was her birthday, so Kirk gets one and my friend gets one. He says it's just a really big donut. Whatever works for him, but, and I might try a bite of it, it's okay. I have the carbs left from today that I can do that. So let's go ahead and get started on the chicken and teriyaki and rice. We're gonna be using um, the ceramic pot, which is amazing, and it comes with this rack. If you've ever followed any of the recipes online for a pressure cooker, a lot of times you'll hear them say, make a sling, and that's just uh, folded aluminum foil that will give you, that you can create a handle to kind of pull these up out of your, your pressure cooker. But then um, this comes with this. The cookbook was it about the cookbook oh i have an ebook that i'm going to be giving you all um, you just need to message me and let me know you're interested and i will send you the pdf it is 23 pages it talks about um, the advantages tips and tricks maintenance troubleshooting and a ton of my favorite recipes including some of my favorite low carb and the ones i'm showing you today so we're gonna be, like i mentioned we're gonna be using this now a pressure cooker works because it has to have moisture to build up pressure so a lot of people, the number one question I get asked is, do I have to double the amount of liquid if I double what's in them? Yes and no. If whatever you're cooking it requires moisture or water, if you double that like rice, which I'm gonna do in the ceramic pot, and it comes with a silicone lid that has a vent in it, um, you are going to want to double that. So if you use a cup, the recipe calls for a cup of rice, and then you'd use a cup of water. But I decided that wasn't enough last time I made it for my husband. So I've put, the, there it is. I've decided to go with a cup and a half of white rice. So instead of just one cup, I'm gonna match that. Um, oh, let me make sure I'm doing this right because I confuse myself sometimes. And you guys who have watched me before, I get going and then I'm like, oh, that's not right. Yeah, you're supposed to match it. So I just have a big, that's why. I put a bunch of water over here, hey Tammy. And so we're gonna do match that with cup and a half of water. In my brain, I was cooking in the micro cooker and you double the water, but you don't do that. Just make sure that if you increase the amount of rice that you match that. So does that make sense at all? So you do not need to, if you're doing chicken or another dish and it calls for a cup of water in your pressure cooker, you do not, if you double the chicken, you do not have to increase the water. And I'm just gonna put this over. Now I've done, you can do a cake right in this dish. You wouldn't necessarily use this because we want it to build up. We're gonna use the moisture from this to cook our chicken in the bottom. So this is, I call my RTD2 unit because he makes cute little noises. But what I love about the pressure cooker, this is my third I've owned. I had a clunky one that um, just didn't seem to work right. It never seemed to seal all the way. Now that I know more about pressure cookers, it could have been an easy fix. But I also didn't love, it would not let me customize the time. Now, any pressure cooker out there, if it's worth its salt and money, should allow you to customize your time on it. Because just because it says beef, let me see, seafood and fish, you may not actually want the time that that preset's on. So I love being able to customize that. So we're gonna go ahead and start creating our sauce in the bottom. I love this. Mo almost every pressure cooker I've ever dealt with has the ability to sear, or this one says saute. Some say saute, some say sear. This one says sear. So we don't need that for today, but I wanted to point that out. It's an amazing feature, especially if you wanna brown up that roast before you cook it. It's awesome. Uh, Sunday we did a roast with a bunch of veggies in here. I seared it up using the sear feature and then added my liquid and all my vegetables it, and it fell apart. It was so delicious, so I'm excited. So this recipe just calls for, I have some ginger that's already been grated, a teaspoon of ginger. Again, you're gonna get this recipe in the book. Just DM me the, your email and I will email it to you since it's a PDF. the ginger we're going to be using honey in this so we're going to use two tablespoons of honey and yes normally i measure this all out but my husband's like why are you doing this so late i have to wait for dinner till after he works graves he already ate <laughs> he had breakfast like a couple hours ago he can wait and again i'm making a lot of this to save for later 
Let's do another one. And this is the best part about doing a virtual party is I'm not at your house demoing in front of your guests. Technically, if I lick my fingers, it's not a bad thing. Hey, Mary Ellen, how are you? I also have a really awesome apron. So let's go ahead and I have a little scraper that I love. So we're gonna add the honey in there. That's really gonna make that teriyaki sauce, teriyaki-ish. We're gonna add in some soy. I really should have like a bucket to put my um, different things on it. You know, just me going, ah. You know, if I had a professional camera person or a sous chef, this would work out great. Didn't account for honey sticking to my fingers. So you get the idea. Super easy. How many of you use your pressure cooker a lot? Or you're a little intimidated because you're not quite sure what to do with it. I kind of want to get a gauge for every, where everybody is at, at this on this. Give me a shout out. How about a one if you use it at least once a week? Uh, five if you hardly ever use it. 10 if you've never taken it out of the box. Because <laughs> I do find that a lot. Everybody gets on the craze and says, I have to have this. I'm using Miram rice wine. And then we're, we've got, oh, garlic. Here's another thing. We're on a like stay home kind of basis. So I'm out of fresh garlic, which is sad because I love fresh garlic. But um, I just have some amazing garlic rub that Pampered Chef released. And it has dehydrated garlic in it. So what you know what's amazing about this is I'm going to add moisture to it. It's going to be just like I have fresh garlic. And it does call for, let's see, two garlic cloves, about a teaspoon of it. Anything dried will probably work great. I like garlic, so I'm probably adding too much. You're intimidated. Done eggs, roast, shredded pork, and chicken. Now, I probably, I have to admit, I use chicken in mine probably the most because I like to cook up a bunch of chicken and save it uh, and just have it throughout the week because then I can make all kinds of things with that shredded chicken. But one of our favorites to do is the salsa chicken. And it, I add in extra things to it and it is actually in the ebook. It is delicious. And we'll start by having a nice meal with it and any of the leftovers, we just make wraps with it. Or um, I add it to salads, it's awesome on salads. So let's see, I've only used it to cook rice. Oh, Callie. That's a really big rice cooker. But did you know I'm gonna do rice and chicken at the same time? That's like a whole meal. Hey, Lori, let's see, you've made cheesecake. Oh, it does make the best cheesecake. Funny story. Last time I did cheesecake, I'm gonna add my chicken, which is nice and frozen. Um, I just have chicken tenders. The recipe says that we can use, oh, let's stir that up a little. I forgot my soy sauce. See, this is what happens when I start talking. I forget. I'm gonna add a fourth a cup of soy sauce because it's just gonna be honey chicken at this rate. Let me see, I've got that, that, that. Yep, I think we got it. I'm gonna use my mini whipper. They brought this back. It's one of my favorite tools. Mix those up. Oh, it smells like honey and soy sauce. Well, and that yummy rice wine, so. And that you can pick up at any grocery store. The Mirin sweet cooking rice seasoning, it works great. I'm gonna put that in there, and then we're gonna add in our frozen chicken. One thing to note when you're doing chicken, I like to use a good nice chicken breast. Um, normally when I'm doing my shredded chicken, try not to stack your meat on top unless you cook it thoroughly. Sometimes you'll get spots where it doesn't cook all the way. So just keep in mind you have that. So I've got that lined across the bottom. We're going to want to use every instant pot pressure cooker should come with a rack. This will help lift up that container that I have my rice in. We're going to go ahead and add that. Just drop that right in. Isn't that nice? I don't have to make a sling. Put that on. So a couple of things of note while we start this. So we're going to different instant pots and pressure cookers have Haymage. Uh, no one else is frozen. Is anyone, that's your internet connection. Try refreshing and coming back. Um, it looks like I've got a great connection here. You know, it's because everybody's home and probably still doing homework. So on the Instant Pot, same thing. I wanna show you a little bit about the pressure valves. There, my, everyone I've owned before this always had this little guy that goes back and forth. And when you try not to touch it, you're like hitting it to release the pressure. 
Pampered Chef has this awesome, let me show you. This is the valve release, here's your valve. You wanna make sure the little cloud embossed part matches up with this to know it's sealed. When you're ready to release it, you push that and your hand's nowhere near it. I really love that safety feature. And then you've also got the pressure gauge here that obviously you wanna make sure that you never have, have that blocked. And then when you go to clean it, I'm gonna tell you, you can actually take that little rubber part right off of your valve on any brand, peel that off, it drops out, clean the inside. We'll talk a little bit more about cleaning here in a second. And I'm doing this backwards. So we're gonna set this, at, I believe at 10 minutes. Oh no, let's see, ceramic, nine minutes. So I'm gonna adjust it to chicken and poultry. My husband's neurotic. I'm gonna customize the time. So I'm gonna drop it to nine minutes. I'm actually gonna leave it at 10 because he's really weird about chicken. He wants to make sure I cook it good and thorough. And since he's the one that's going to be eating it, I'm just gonna start that. Now on average, most of the recipes I've noticed take about six, seven minutes to build up pressure. And believe it or not, when you're using a pressure cooker, the more you add to it, the longer it takes to build the pressure. Now in my brain, if it's more full, I think it would take less time because there's less area to have pressure. But that's not the case. So the more you put in it, the longer it takes. I know that's weird, right? So some of the features I wanna talk about that a lot of people don't know about is of course I've mentioned the sear. You do have steam, which is amazing because we offer these double stack steamer baskets which like I've done chicken and broccoli or oh fish does great in this. And so you have that steam option to do that. These are amazing and you get both of them together. Let's see, on Instant Pot, you would just do 10 minutes on manual. Yes, that is correct. So on typically, so mine shows high. Um, whenever your little lines go all the way out, that's a high temperature. I can adjust that depending on which feature I push. So I believe on hers, this is a neighbor's of mine. I don't technically have two pressure cookers. Yeah, she has me. I would probably just, and it, you can adjust the pressure and the time. Just make sure it's on high for 10 minutes. We're also gonna do what they call a natural release. So you have quick release, natural release. Quick release is when, as soon as the, the beeper goes off, you can hit that button, let all the pressure out. Done, quick release. Natural releases on a lot of recipes, well, most recipes, if they have a natural release, will say 10 minutes. That just means leave it alone for 10 minutes. Let that pressure kind of subside, come out, whatever little area can come out. When it, you hit that 10 minutes, then release it. And you'll notice a lot less pressure comes out when you do that. And so I think that's a really awesome, I don't know why you do that, but it does make a difference. Um, in fact, earlier today on the cake, I will admit, it said natural release for 10 minutes. Lori forgot all about it. Totally forgot about it. I'm downstairs getting some work done. I come upstairs and seriously, my cake looks like it's cooked all the way through, but it's a little like rubbery looking on top. So all I did, I'm a stinker. I don't think you can see on this one. Um, but all I did is I just took my little bump pan and it fits in my air fryer really good. So I air fried it up to brown it up because I left it in here for 30 minutes on natural release. So it was, it had way too much moisture in there by the time I pulled out, but it still looks amazing. So I'm stoked about that. So you've got the natural release. We talked about the quick release. You've got that down. So it's gonna take about six minutes. It's not actually counting time until it builds up pressure. So don't freak out. But it's really hard for me to say, hey, this recipe cooks for 30 minutes. Oh, but by the way, you have to wait for the pressure to build up. So I don't really know how long it cooks, but you'll kind of get a feel for your pressure cooker the more you use it. So let's talk a little bit about cleaning. Since this little guy is being worked, we're gonna switch and pull over this Instant Pot. Oh, no, we won't. We will just move the camera. Um, I have quite the setup where not all plugs are created equal. So. Let's talk a little bit about the lids. On your lid, never submerse it in water to wash it. You can go ahead and just take your brush or your washcloth, rinse out the inside, make sure that the outside's pretty clean, that's it. So don't put it in your dishwasher, do not put it under water. So to clean the rest of it, the valve should come right out on all of them. This one comes right out. You can clean out right inside of here. I have this little mini cleaning brush, let me grab it. So this is a dual sided brush. I love it because it helps me get into that area so I can clean up, put that back on. And then your valve, like I mentioned, all valves have a little plastic seal right here. 
that plastic seal comes right off and then that valve comes out. So you can clean that, clean out the inside of that hole. Now, the only time I really ran into a problem where I felt like it needed to be clean is my cauliflower soup, my loaded cauliflower soup. Um, yeah, sometimes I overload it. There is a max fill line on your, um, your still pot inside. Adhere to that. So what happened is I had it sputtering all over. So you can lay kind of a cloth over this. Don't block it all the way so that the spitting of whatever liquid you've overfilled it isn't going all over. Trust me on that one. So you've cleaned that out, you've cleaned this out. Now this is a lot something a lot of people don't know. This silicone ring can be replaced. And a lot of times when you find, after you, if you use it a lot, you'll start to lose seal on them. Hey, Miss Eva coming from Australia. So this tends to get, you can wash this, you can throw it in the dishwasher. Um, I can smell, I'm not sure, it smells like she made salsa chicken. That's the problem with it, it tends to absorb some of the smell. So you can purchase other silicone rings. Pampers Chef sells a set. What I love about using these is I know I'm always gonna do sweet recipes with this and savory recipes with this works great but don't worry it takes a while for this to stretch out and not work all the way so a little trick if you find it's a little too stretched out and you're not getting that really nice seal toss it in your freezer for 30 minutes and you will get a perfect seal it will go right back on and you just put this that's another thing troubleshooting issue if you find you're not getting pressure build up and it's just taking forever I boiled some chicken for like 30 minutes once um, always make sure that this silicone ring is in place because one time I put it, took it out and put it back, not all the way. And so it was kind of sticking off to the side like that and it could never get a good seal. So make sure that's in place. So also make sure on your, all of them come, stainless steel, not all of, them, all of them come with this. When we did our workshop last time, a gal had one that looked kind of gross. I like the stainless steel. It makes it look nice, it cleans up nice. So as you can see, it's got measurements here that you can also read on the inside. There is a max fill line, follow that. Make sure that the heating element down here is nice and clean. Let's see, ask Maddie to bring me back. <laughs> I thought she left, so I tried to get her to bring cast iron to you in Australia and she laughed hysterically when I had her lift them up because I don't know if that would fit in her suitcase either. But so you've got that. Another tip, if you just find you've used it a lot, still has that kind of retaining that smell, one of my favorite things to do is drop a cup of vinegar, just regular old white vinegar, drop a cup of vinegar on like half a lemon or the lemon rind. Turn it to five minutes on high pressure, walk away. And then release the pressure, rinse it out. It smells so lovely. It doesn't even smell like vinegar. It smells like yummy lemon. Oh, I forget, don't touch that. So the safety feature is, if you've never used one, you'll see this little valve right now, it's going up and down. It's gauging that pressure. This is also won't let me open the lid. As long as this has built up pressure, it's an automatic lock for any pressure cooker. And most pressure cookers I've found do get warm to the touch. So if you have a little kids around, maybe watch them. This has a double wall panel so you don't feel the warmth, but on some of these other no-name brands, you start to fill it. So let's go ahead and get this one started, this recipe. This is one of my favorites, what you could call a dump recipe, um, like the salsa chicken, you drum it, chalk salsa in over your chicken, let it go. So I'm actually gonna be doing 16 ounces of macaroni noodles, which I have right here. So this was a trick to get right now because you know the pasta aisles are all cleared out. So I had to keep going back until I could collect enough. They were in these itty bitty packages that cost like 39 cents. Maybe because pasta is cheap. I don't eat pasta, so it's, I don't care, but my husband loves this, so. Hey, Miss Bev, how are you? Welcome. So we're doing some three cheese mac and cheese. I have a secret ingredient you have to wait to find out about. So make sure that's just all down here. We'll go ahead and move this over because it doesn't actually have to be in the instant pot. Super easy recipe, one of my favorites. If I had grandkids, this would be one I would, a go-to recipe for me. So then we're gonna put in, um, I love using just regular chicken broth. It's, you don't have to, water would work, but it does add a little bit of flavor to the chicken. If you're doing chicken in place of water, I almost always use this. It calls for four cups. Just make sure all your noodles are covered. Okay, yeah, that, that works. 
and I did stock up on this one. Not like crazy stock up. I mean like three of them. Not too bad. And my mom said today she went to the store and they had like toilet paper and paper towels and I think that's all she looked for. But she doesn't eat normal food. So, so we've got the macaroni in here. We're going to add three tablespoons of butter right to the recipe. Let that cook up in there, I think. Let me make sure I don't forget anything. Oh, my secret ingredient. We're also going to add some salt, pepper, garlic. Let me bring this over. We're going to do a teaspoon of each. So a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm going to taste... I have a couple secret ingredients actually for this recipe. Uh, two teaspoons of salt, and I use this unbelievably wonderful salt from Utah. It's Redmond Real Salt, and it's health-wise, it's similar to using um, pink Himalaya salt. I don't love iodized salt. I don't think it's very good for you, but that's my personal preference. Just don't forget salt. It's important. How is everybody handling the social isolate or what is it called social distancing i think that's an oxymoron how can you socially distance yourself i'm like social implies like not far away from each other but it's all right eva have you been having to work because i know you work at a hospital or do you get to stay home and take care of all those cute little ones that you're in charge of okay we've got the salt the garlic oh the secret ingredient um, and you can do a couple of options for this. We use Tabasco sauce. And even if you're kids, I promise you it's not hot. And I'm a wuss. It just gives it that like elevates the flavor. I can't figure it out. But it is the bomb. And I've used some cayenne pepper. Probably go half on that. It's a little strong. But this not so much. So I'm just going to use a teaspoon. And I'm dropping a whole bunch in there. There we go. Okay, that's all we have to do. This cooks up super duper fast. We'll add the cheese after. So I'm gonna add it to this Instant Pot. This does taste really good reheated, according to my husband. Oops, oh, don't touch the pressure valve. Let me show you right here. So we've got our, I always do these wrong because I haven't, I don't own this one. Oh, closed, open. I didn't know Instant Pots made R2-D2 sounds too. Yay! So you have to make sure on these that you have the valve turned to sealed. Okay, that looks like it's sealed. And this little baby, we're only going to cook for, um, it says eight minutes. My husband says that he doesn't. It depends on the macaroni. So I always err on the side, give it an extra one. Eight minutes. Let's see. We don't want slow cook. Sometimes I go through. No, that's too high. Let's see. Rice. Nope, that's low pressure. Let's just go do this. Okay, high pressure, adjust timer. No, nope, I don't want timer. Ooh, that's cool. Timer. Let's not do that. Cancel. Okay. Let's do pressure. Hmm. Okay, pressure. Let's do high. Adjust. Hey, people who have an instant pot, sorry, I've used this a couple times, but like it, oh, there we go. We have a button there. No, stop. It just decided it's going to go. See, this is what happens when you have pressure. Oh, no, I want that pressure. Manual. Oh, there we go. Okay, let's do it on nine minutes. Start. Does it have a start button? I, oh, it's just going to go automatically. Forgive me. Hey, Miss Karen. Karen came to my workshop. We've gotten really good. Check this out, Karen. Did cake again. Okay, that's going to start going. So we have the recipe. Let's talk about some of the accessories available that work in all six quart um, pressure cookers. So I made the cake using the fluted pan. I believe, Karen, did you get that one on your order? So we've got the fluted pan. It comes with the stand so that you can pull it in and out super easy. Now, I'll get this one ready to cook after these are all done, but you've seen the after. Um, I just mixed up a full-size cake mix, one of those, that I just had in my storage. And I mixed it in our batter mix and pour, because I'm lazy like that. I like that it contains it all. This is like you could use for pancake 
crisps and cupcakes and different things. I've already done half, so I could tell it was four cups when it's all mixed up in here. I know I only need two the next time. Hey, Miss Jackie, I'm using her Instant Pot. Could have used you a minute ago, but that's okay. Um, you made chocolate cake with caramel bites. <sighs> Did it turn out good? That sounds delicious. You can add mix-ins, super easy. So mix up your cake like you would normally. And only put half in the fluted pan. If you don't have a fluted pan, you can use just a regular um, cake pan that will fit. It's because I have to push that air out. There we go. <laughs> Not feeling so good. That's all right. This keeps me from licking it. Mike, if you're watching this, you know, you get it. So I'm not. If it were in a in a bowl, it'd be really hard to resist. But so you want to make sure, so I've got that ready to go. You're just going to want to make sure you cover it. So I'm going to cover it with foil. When I've done cheesecake, one of the things I do is I put a paper towel over the, the edge of the springform pan. So we do have a springform pan that opens on the side so that you can do yummy cheesecakes. You'll notice I'm missing the bottom. Apparently my husband threw it away when he didn't finish the cheesecake. It was still attached to the cheesecake. So I, I have to order another one, but that's okay. I'm not mad at him or anything. See if I ever make him cheesecake again. So just wanna take some foil, make sure you seal it. Some spring, now on the spring form pan, you can do, when you do cheesecake, a lot of times it'll advise you to seal it with foil on the bot, bottom, even though you have that bottom piece so you're not getting any moisture in those seams and then along the top. Like I said, I put a paper towel and then some foil over it. Oh my gosh, best cheesecake ever. Right, Jackie? We did do a lemon cheesecake and then we decided we didn't love, Jackie was so smart. She's like, don't use the lemon extract. It has a funky taste. So I think we you just use lemon rind, right? And some lemon juice. So I would just seal that so I can still grab onto that handle. You could even split that and seal it. So the handle is exposed. Now that I have that all ready to go, when I get these two out, we're gonna cook up another cake for a friend. Maybe Jackie, because I gotta give her back her in some pot. So it turned out cute. Oh, Jackie, you didn't get to see it. Here's, a, Kirk called it a big donut. So it's just funfetti cake, perfect size, maybe for little families. So a couple of the other accessories I absolutely love. They just released this March 1st. It is a glass lid, and I love it because most good pressure cookers have an option to slow cook. I noticed this one has a slow cook. The problem is you can't check what's in it because you've sealed the lid. You don't really need it sealed because you're not building up pressure. So it's kind of like your option is to put the big clunky lid on and keep opening that up all the way or buy a really pretty glass lid, which we did try and it fits really nicely on top. The other thing I love about it is the digital thermometer that I use a lot for meat. This little hole right here is perfect so that I can plug it into my meat and check that temperature on my roast all the time. So that's a pretty cool feature. I was really excited they came out with that because it was in a need for sure. Then of course, all pressure cookers come with a rack, a small rack. Some of them come with a larger one that's higher. This is one of my favorite things. It's called a stackable trays. Now you can purchase them without these little guys. I'll show you what they are. You can purchase one all by itself. I love that these little handles come right off so you can store it flat. I keep a like a Rubbermaid container that I just keep all my accessories in that go in my pantry. But I love, love, love that if I'm doing two dozen eggs, I can stack this and just do both sets of eggs. And everybody has a little bit of a different way they do deviled eggs in their pressure cooker. The one I found that works great for my pressure cooker, I call deviled eggs, because I'm funny like that. Hey, Miss Sherry. Sherry came to one of my, well, actually she came to my very first cooking party that my cute friend and Nat hosted. Anyway, so this stacks just like that. You can do all those eggs on it. This is great for a lot of other things, but what I love is when you combine it with the one cup glass containers that usually come, well, they do come when you purchase them. They come with these awesome white lids for storing. So if you have leftovers, those are perfect. But to cook in the pressure cooker, we did some key lime pie custard. You could do some molten cakes, some 
Petra. There's some amazing recipes on the Pamper Chester um, website. So you can put three on the top and three on the bottom. It comes with six. So that works out great. And I love that. I'm gonna do little egg quiches. Have you ever been to Starbucks and tried their yummy little egg bites that they sous vide, which is cooking with moisture? And uh, I'm gonna do them. They're just gonna be a little bit bigger than Starbucks, but I can customize it. Each one can have different things in it. So I love that little accessory. And then of course, we're using the ceramic pan, which is amazing, little ceramic dish that has the stretchable lid that goes on it as well. So now that, let's see, this one started, we have three minutes left. I have no idea. I think the mac and cheese is still building up pressure. So we'll move those off to the side. Does anybody have any questions about their pressure cooker? You know, this is that moment where I, that's an awkward pause. Um, let's see what I've got to work on. We've got the rest of that. Oh, I was gonna whip up while we're waiting. One of the things everybody talks about is their eggs. I Like I said, deviled eggs. I cook them at six minutes on high pressure. I do six minutes natural release, and then I do six minutes in an ice bath. Six, six, six. You get it? Let's see, can you make cream brulee in the little pot? Oh yeah, for sure. And then you just, if you have one of those little torches, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, I've seen a few consultants actually post about um, cream brulee. I can see if I can find the recipe for you, but that would be delicious, right? So I'm just gonna, while we're waiting for these to finish, you guys can post your questions. Let's see, you forget to cover your cake. It didn't hardly, would it didn't hardly any moisture I bloated it with a paper, oh, blotted it. Oh, well, that's good. Um, it's, I think, just a common practice to, to cover with foil. I've never tried it without, but like I said, if it comes out and you think it's not quite cooked all the way, probably the easiest thing to do would be to just toss it in the oven for a little bit, or like I did with my, um, what do you call it, air fryer. So, and I did mention I was gonna do some giveaways. So for all of you who have been in here, I wanna make sure everybody has a chance to comment. I'm also gonna open up the giveaways at least through tomorrow for anyone who joins us later. Cause I know on the East Coast, some of my friends mentioned that this was way too late for them to learn about a pressure cooker. So obviously by commenting, I'll know you were here. Um, if you email me or DM me saying you want the 23 page handbook, the ebook, let's see what so just to show you, for example, so I've got everything in here about the advantages of using an electric pressure cooker. If you don't even have one, but you're interested in learning more about it, it has your quick, the conversion chart from oven to pressure cooker. And then it goes into some of my favorite recipes. My all time favorite, I probably made more than anything is my um, low carb loaded cauliflower soup. Ooh, this also has my other favorite, the quick cooker salsa chicken lettuce wraps. And then it goes into, you can make homemade yogurt. I don't know why, but a lot of people are doing it right now, I think, because they're stuck at home. Okay, so we've hit our pressure. What I love about, if this, if both of these should do it, it'll start giving me a count, uh, like it's counted down. Now that it's done, it will give me a count up. So once I hit 10 minutes on natural release, then I'll open it. So some of the other recipes we've got in here, quiche, butternut squash soup, key lime pie, mold cider apple cider yum i haven't tried that one and then we've got some pot roast some tortilla soup oh this is a yummy recipe of course the teriyaki chicken i'm doing um this one we tried the other day with diet root beer quick cooker barbecue root beer ribs it it worked great and it actually calls for a barbecue sauce which i use the stubs barbecue sauce you can pick up at well you used to be able to pick up at walmart i bought it or at smith's I also have the how to do hard boiled eggs, Zupa's cauliflower and cheese soup. I don't think it's as good as mine, but I give you both just in case. We also have the yummy strawberry cheesecake. And then a lot of people right now, this would be really good to have a lot of people due to um, food intolerances and allergies, maybe a leaky gut, what they call it. I give you a recipe to make your own bone broth, which is really easy to do. And then I even give you chicken cooking time which I, this is super helpful for me. So everything from if you're doing a whole chicken all the way down to just chicken wings. Now I'll tell you, don't be discouraged when you're using your pressure cooker. The first time I ever tried something in it, I did, oh, wings, chicken wings. 
just the frozen kind you get at, at like Sam's Club. I tossed them in there, cooked them what it said, pulled them out, and they were like gooey wet. And I'm like, I did some, I'm sure I did something wrong. I think one thing I didn't, if you coat them in salt and pepper and baking soda, that helps a little bit, but it's definitely not going to crisp it up like it does in my air fryer. That's my favorite thing to make in there. So don't get discouraged if one recipe doesn't work for you. Um, keep trying. One of my favorite things to do in here is a, a, just a meatloaf where we just throw in different kinds of meat and um, like some sausage, regular hamburger, mushrooms, onions, and everything and mix that all up. And then I split it with foil so I get two little ones. And it comes out looking kind of funky weird because you've used, just used water to cook it. So I just throw it in under the broiler in the oven. Perfection. Let's see. Lori asks, can you make, oh, we already answered that one. You need the cheesecake recipe so you can use your spring form pan. I will, oh, that's in here actually. Oh, do you want that lemon one? That was good. But Jackie and I figured out don't use the extract. It gives it a funky taste. Just use lemon juice and lemon, um, what do they call that? Lemon you know, that one thing that Lori can never remember when she's doing a video. So I go into different things about pointers, troubleshooting, like I mentioned, some issues with not, if you start to see steam coming out around the edges while you're trying to build up pressure, that means something's wrong with that silicone ring. Open it up and definitely, I will post that lemon cheesecake. It's, oh, zest. Thank you, Carrie. I'm like, what is that called? So, and then just different things about that would be really helpful. I even show you a picture of what each of those accessories are so that you can find them super easy. Another option, if you're placing an order with me for Pampered Chef, we do have, this originally only came when you purchased the Quick Cooker from Pampered Chef. It is an amazing little guy and you can actually order it on your order as a replacement part. I know that sounds funny, but what I love about it is it gives you, it walks you through just the basics, but I love this. It shows you how to cook up beans. You don't have to pre-soak them. Just rinse them off, put them in, and it tells you what to cook them out. And I don't like beans, but Kirk says they're awesome. So I haven't tried that. It does grains and rice, gives you a whole breakdown here so you know what to do. So you can add that to your order. And then it goes into vegetables. Oh, if you've never done a spaghetti squash in your Instant Pot, it's life altering. We get into meat and poultry. It'll give you what to cook it if it's frozen, what to cook it if it's fresh, which is awesome. Welcome, Joan. Don't worry, everything you missed ahead of, before this, you can go back. And then it goes into some really delicious recipes. Here's those root beer ribs. Don't they look delightfully yummy? And yes, diet root beer works. I know, because I tried it. I don't know why it wouldn't, but we go into some chili. This is a really popular one. Beef stew with Parmesan polenta. Have you guys ever tried polenta? Um, I think cauliflower, uh, cauliflower puree would actually taste better. Roasted, uh, a roast, a salmon, if you've never tried steaming salmon with some veggies, uh, you need the steamer baskets for that. And then the strawberry cheesecake, which is actually in the ebook I'm going to give you. So I think you could adjust this just instead of, let's see, I think the strawberries, just what they put on top. So, but I will post that lemon one. Let's see, super helpful guide, better than the one that comes with the, oh good, <laughs> I'm glad. So I really love this. It's worth the $2, I believe, two or $3 it is on there. So just um, quick cooker cooking guide. So I am, I do have an open party right now for those of you who haven't seen me posting. I'm actually doing a fundraiser. Kirk and I were talking the other day about what could we do to help. Can't go very many places. It's hard to do anything. We feel so very blessed. I'm, I'm like, I'm grateful we still have electricity and we still have the internet and we have food that we can get by with. So I don't have fresh garlic. I'll get over it. It's not the end of the world. And, um, but we just felt like there has to be something else we can do. We were reading about how a spring break starting next week that a lot of families won't have the option to, I don't know if this is true. Maybe those of you who are familiar with the school systems, um, those families that rely on school lunch won't have that option during spring break. And more and more, I think during this, we're gonna start seeing a lot more people needing to turn to um, like the Utah Food Bank, which this fundraiser, the money will go directly to them. So when you place an order for any of these accessories, any Pampered Chef, I'm hoping to get up to 30% kickback because Pampered Chef announced, look how beautiful those peel. Pampered Chef announced on Friday, they're gonna double what they donate which I was grateful for. I've never tried doing a fundraiser through Pampered Chef, so I was excited to try it. Kirk is my host. <laughs> I just, he's like, I'm a what? 
point. Don't worry about it. Just tell your friends that we're doing a fundraiser. Also, if you purchase, there's a couple of Roundup items. If you purchase those, those will help purchase up to 10 meals, which is pretty awesome. And one's the scoop and spread. The other is the sandwich cut and seal, which is an amazing little guy. And then of course, when you place an order, you can round up your order and that money will also be donated. And you can also adjust that to any amount you'd like. So I gave you the spill. Um, I just felt really strongly like, I, if you can't do anything, do something. And I keep reading stories about people who are um, not faring well with these restrictions. And so I hope it's not bringing out the worst in people, but instead it's bringing out the best. And I know sometimes it's just hard. You have to be creative, right? Uh, I saw a friend um, go around and deliver bread using a paint pole that he just clipped the bag to. So he stayed six feet away from his neighbors. But I thought that was clever. My cute, um, the owners of Keto Chow that I work with, they have six kids that they're homeschooling. <laughs> Props to Miriam. But I thought it was cute. They had ordered some toilet paper for their business that's not what they wanted to use at home. So they wrapped it, put a cute little saying with it that said it was something funny about Remember the old days when we used to hang toilet paper from the trees kind of thing? And then it said, Happy Merry Early Christmas, and they took it around to all their neighbors. I guess you could huck them at them. Leave it on their door. I bet the kids had a ball um, leaving toilet paper on the doorstep and running. So welcome, Renee. For those of you joining us late, we have, we're waiting for this guy to get up to 10 minutes on natural release. We're going to, we did a um, teriyaki chicken and rice in here. I wanted to show a lot of people have never tried doing the stacked food. So I wanted to show that. And then of course, an all time party favorite and perfect for families is the three cheese mac and cheese. Cause I had never tried cooking pasta in my pressure cooker until I started working with Pampered Chef. And I've done like a, a carbonara. Oh, it was so good. So not keto, but it was yummy. Let's see, do you have key? Oh, I do actually in the, um, ebook I'm going to send you. There is a link directly to all of my amazing pressure cooker keto recipes. And uh, I did put a few in the ebook, but that Pinterest board is going to be a lifesaver for you if you're looking for low carb. What is Keto Chow? I know, isn't that a funny name? Keto Chow is actually a company out of uh, Riverton, Bluffdale, that area. Uh, a wonderful family started it and it is actually a meal replacement shake for keto. And so it has one third of your daily vitamins in each of their shakes. And I've tried a lot of protein shakes and there, some of them are funky tasting. These taste like melted ice cream and they have 22 different flavors. I believe it's 22 still, I should know that. Um, but my favorite, I can't get past it, is I do a chocolate shake every morning for breakfast. I don't do the whole thing. I just, and I put Tarani sugar-free caramel syrup. So it's chocolate caramel. It's so good. And then I heat it up in a mug. So I have hot chocolate because it's a great way to go with hot chocolate. So keto chow. I do have a link and my, I'll post a link to if you want to go check it out. I do have a discount code you can use. It's just all red design. If you want to give them a try, they are wonderful people and it really helped me on keto, especially when I was working out of my home, working in the office. Sometimes it's hard to just pack up what you can have on keto. Oh, we're at 10 minutes. Let's release the pressure on this. So you'll see. Uh, you can't really see it, but there's pressure. Don't put your face over it. I have done that. Get your glasses off. So we're gonna wait till that pressure, oh, the valve went down. Let's make sure it goes down all the way. Not all the way, it's still locked, so you have to wait till that pressure finishes. <laughs> You're probably joining us going, why is she peeling eggs? Um, one, because I did them in the pressure cooker earlier, and I'm gonna show you really quick, yummy egg salad, and that's my dinner. Kirk's gonna eat mac and cheese, and I'm gonna have a yummy egg salad, but that's okay. And yes, we are eating way late, but when your husband works great, she kind of, this is his night off. So he loves that I do these watches for dinner Wednesday, especially when I say, oh, by the way, honey, I'm doing it at 7.30 instead of 5.30. And um, he'll get over it, right? I offered to let him come and help me because I sure could use a sous chef, but he wasn't at all interested. So be aware when you're opening up your pressure cooker, you're gonna have a lot of moisture come right off that lid. Ah. So like turn it away from you. I'm gonna walk this over here so it's not in my way. 
Okay, we are doing the mac and cheese. I believe I have to leave that on a natural release too. Let me make sure it's the very first recipe that I give you. Then do a quick release, yay! Oh, both of them out at the same time. How lucky could we get? So I'm just gonna, this is what I do on these kind. Hurry and do it and move away. We're gonna let that steam come out of that. I'm gonna pull these little guys out I have. My husband never puts anything back where he's supposed to, so. Ooh, the chicken looks yummy. Okay, you guys can't see this. Okay, I'm just gonna do something I've never done. Okay, here's how the chicken looks when it first, oh, I gotta go backwards, this way. I'm gonna make you guys super nauseous, there you go. So I'm gonna make sure that, oh, oops. Facebook's telling me do not rotate your phone. Okay, hold on, there we go. See, this is why I need a professional cameraman. I'm just gonna make sure my chicken, the other side that's just kind of rotate it around in that yummy teriyaki sauce. If you wanted to add a little bit of cornstarch to it, maybe thicken that up, you sure could do that. I use, for those of you that do um, low carb, I just use an arrowroot flour to make a roux. That helps. We're gonna pull this, see all the moisture sitting on top of that? Oh, look how lovely. Let's take a fork. Fill that up. Ooh, that looks lovely for rice. I don't miss rice. I'll tell you, it's not my favorite. Unless, of course, Cynthia will agree with me. Unless it's um, chicken fried rice from Benihana's. And when my mom takes me there, she makes me agree to give her that. She's like, you're not supposed to eat it. And I'm like, but, because it's the bomb. So we've got our chicken. Um, probably how I would serve this up is put the chicken on it and pour the sauce over it to add that yummy teriyaki flavor to our rice but you get the point right let's move on to my favorite okay so we've got that yumminess going on in there and these clean up really nice i haven't had any problems one thing i'm going to add here's a little thing i'll tell you about before we get it's still releasing pressure so i'm take a little longer well and plus we didn't do a natural release so it's going to take a little longer um, I'm gonna use our Enrichables. These are amazing, and especially right now where maybe it's harder. I know a couple areas, some friends have told me they've had a really hard time finding meat sources. And so they're not getting a lot of protein. The beans are gone off the shelf. So I actually really love that we have this option. It's a pea protein. There's no flavor to it. It's only made with peas. And what I love about it is you get 10 grams of protein in it. You can hide it in your food so your kids have no idea. So my daughter used to eat a lot of carbs when she was younger and not enough protein. I would have loved to have this option. You can purchase these one at a time or you can set it up on a subscription base. And then the other one they offer, which I'm not gonna put in the mac and cheese because it will turn it green, is the kale. You get two cups of kale and eight grams of fiber in this little guy. I've tossed it into different casseroles and whatnot, but keep in mind, this will discolor it green. I did it on some taco meat one night and my husband was like, why is the meat green? Is it bad? Wow, that really takes a long time. Okay, let me get a towel. Where did I put my towel? I'm gonna get ready, because this is my favorite part. We're just gonna add cheese. I mean, if you've never made homemade homemade mac and cheese, people. Um, one little trick that I love, you can totally add in add-ins. My kids used to love it when I'd cut up hot dogs. I know that sounds really gross, but they think it's so cool when they're little. So cut up hot dogs. I, you could call it gourmet. Um, I would probably do bacon if it were me. And then um, another thing we do is we like to brown up just some breadcrumbs. Just add some butter to a pan, put in your breadcrumbs, and then go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this guy so I can move it around. So brown up those breadcrumbs, put them on top. Come here, Instant Pot. 
Did you guys know it's not an Insta Pot? It's an instant pot. I did not know that. Let's see. Okay. So I think we've got, oh yeah, the valve's gone down. That means I can open it. Pull that away from your face. Just make sure. I'm going to break up that macaroni because it's done a great job of puffing right up. And while it's still super hot is when we're going to add in the cheese. So I've already grated. Now the recipe calls for a like two cups of mozzarella, a cup of cheddar, and a half a cup of Parmesan. I like white cheddar, so that's why you see a lot of white in here. And a secret ingredient I'll teach you. Have you ever done the cheese where it is really stringy? Mozzarella tends to do that. So add in place of your mozzarella, maybe do some Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese will make it nice and smooth and you won't get that super stringy effect. So I'm gonna just do handfuls. Not the whole thing, because we wanna make sure we get all the way around mixed in. Then we're gonna add in a little bit of milk. My husband keeps checking to see if his mac and cheese is done. And this makes a ton. Another secret, if you wanna know, cream cheese. Just don't tell anybody. Hey, Miss Tia, we're doing the three cheese mac and cheese. She had this in person. She came to the one of the in-person workshops, you know, when we were allowed together. So that's the rest. So let's add our milk. It says a half a cup to a cup. Um, I'd probably, if I were eating it, which I'm not, I'd probably do some heavy cream just to make it a little creamier. But let's go ahead and add in that. I just add a cup. I don't normally have milk. And my husband gets all excited if I buy cereal and milk. Oh, that looks super yummy, guys. Super easy, look how easy that was. And it makes a ton. I think we're up to the, oh, little between eight and 10 cup capacity of super delicious. So I probably do, just to make it a little bit more gourmet, some breadcrumbs on top, some brown breadcrumbs be perfected. Oh, I told you I was gonna add in the pea protein. So just to show you what this looks like, it's even yellow. And again, there's no smell to it, no flavor to it. And he won't even know I added 10 grams of protein to this yummy recipe. It's perfect for smoothies too. If you're trying to add, get in a little bit more protein into your kid's diet, Ooh, that looks super delicious. I'm sorry, none of you can actually taste this. So does anybody have any questions about their pressure cooker that they would like to, me to try and answer? I'm not saying that I will answer it perfectly. I'm looking to see. So this is, keeps me busy so I can give you an opportunity to comment. Just using the mix and chop to break up my boiled eggs. I'm gonna add in, this is usually a kind of an eyeball recipe. I'm gonna add in some mayo, and then my secret ingredient in my egg salad is worth it. It's from a company out of California, oh, North Carolina, called uh, Select Savory Seasonings, and this is totally keto, for those of you wondering. They don't add sugar. You gotta watch those seasonings. A lot of them, they add sugar. It's called Ranch Tastic. Uh, it's a dry ranch. A mix and I absolutely adore it. It's even yummy sprinkled on things, but I'm gonna mix it into my egg salad. So pretty much I think I've covered it all. I've told you guys about my fundraiser. If you're interested in purchasing any of the accessories, we went through everything from the fluted pan to the double steamer baskets you can do in any six quart. You don't have to have the Pampered Chef one. Six quart, you've got the glass, the silicone rings if you want to do a sweet and savory version. Keep on hand. It's always nice to have one on hand in case yours goes kaput. Then you've got the glass lid, perfect for the slow cooker feature. The spring form pan that does come with a bottom if your husband doesn't throw it away with the leftover cheesecake. I mean, really, leftover cheesecake. It's because I told him it was keto. And for some reason in his brain, he's like, hey, I don't think this is probably that good. He actually liked it. He just doesn't, he's not a huge cheesecake fan. And I can't eat leftover. I'm gonna start bringing them over to you, Tia. Let's see, another great use for the mix. Oh yeah, I actually use it a lot for really non-traditional stuff. So it works great on chicken if you wanna break up your chicken too. Those chicken tenders, it'd be great to chop those up. 
So I'm just gonna add in the rest of the stuff and I'll have my dinner all ready to go. So does any, again, be sure to DM me or drop me an email, lori at allreddesign.net and I will get you that 23 page ebook that goes over all of the, I've talked about. Hey Angie, you're a little late to the party, but that's okay. <laughs> Anyway, so, and we do have a special next month if you're interested in hosting a virtual party, which are all the rage right now because everybody's stuck at home and they need a break from their kids and major retail therapy. So um, I've been doing some really fun virtual parties. So if you're interested next month, our promotion is $100 extra rewards, which is awesome. Like I've got to host a party so I can get the $100 but I'd love to help you host a party. So thank you, Pam. Oh, I miss Pam. I don't get a quilt anymore. I quilt with Pam. So you guys have been awesome. I think next time I'm going to try doing another workshop. I'm looking at maybe some other ideas, definitely an air fryer workshop, but I think I'm going to try Zoom because I would love the opportunity to have you be able to talk to me because right now I have to rely on you just leaving a comment. And again, if you're interested, oh, let's talk about the giveaways. I forgot about that. So for all of you who joined me, I've got some fun items that I was going to give away. One is the new Measure Mix and Pour. I know this doesn't help. So this is what it looks like. It, it replaces the old one, isn't it beautiful? They put a couple recipes right on it, dump that in, mix it up. It seals, so it's perfect. And then we've got the, this one's my favorite. You might have seen my video I did the other day. This is the herb keeper. And this beauty will hold those herbs that you have to put. Have you ever tried putting your parsley or your cilantro in a jar with some water in the bottom with maybe a bag over it and hope to heck you don't dump it out of the fridge, which ultimately you always do. So this little guy will fit right on your um, door and you can put different herbs in it, drop in some water in the bottom. And I kept cilantro good for at least two weeks using mine. And that was awesome because a lot of times I'll use the cilantro and then toss it because I don't want to hassle with keeping it on hand. So we're going to be giving away one of those babies. How do you get in the giveaway? Um, email me, message me, place an order at, or comment here on the thread. Let's me know that you're here because I know some people tend to watch but don't ever comment. Um, you can just say, hey, hey, or let's see a couple other items. I'm giving away the awesome little... Isn't that cute? It does a fourth of a cup up to four tablespoons. It is the, I want to call it by the right name. It is the Easy Read Mini Measuring Cup. That just came out March 1st. And then we've got, do I have this around here that's not dirty? Um, it is amazing. If you have a blender and you have that problem where you can't ever get down into the blender, this is the new Long Skinny Scraper. And it is the bomb for that, those hard to reach. I'm gonna do a mini whipper. And then of course, my all time favorite, the mini mix and scraper. So be sure, thank you, Jake, for saying, hey. Uh, in fact, why doesn't everybody, just to enter, I would love, even if you're watching this on replay, just comment where you're from and how you're handling things. You're doing good, you're going crazy. Um, I, I will let you know. I will also let you know, especially if you email, I email you the, the 23 page ebook. I'll let you know when I do my next workshop. I've had a lot of people request that I do one on the air fryer just to give you some ideas. Some people don't own an air fryer, want to see what all the fun is about. So let's see, you need a mini whipper. Oh, for your keto chow, yes, that is nice. In fact, I use it all the time in my hot keto chow. It works great. I use it a lot with dressings and um, different things. It's actually quite a useful tool. I don't have to pull out my big whipper. Instead, I just pull out my mini whipper. In fact, I own three. I had two from like forever ago. I think they're like 20 years old, but then I have a new one in the mix. So let's see. Oh, thank you, Taylor. I'm glad you can make it. I saw that you commented to Midge that you are a little intimidated by your pressure cooker, but don't be. It's an amazing tool, but probably my number one favorite feature is it takes frozen food to cook in no time at all. Let's see, Shirlene. Oh, you're awesome. Thanks, Shirlene. I appreciate you all joining me this late at night. I hope you guys all enjoy your social distancing. In fact, I'm going to make a t-shirt that says the pandemic of disappointment 2020 because that's what I feel like it's been is just big disappointments. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm grateful for the things that we do have, but it's it's been a hard adjustment. So let's see. Rhonda, you're in Riverdale. Oh, I do think I remember seeing that. You were in one of my parties. 
Oh, oh, do you work in healthcare? Yeah, that is hard. Yes, Kirk, the mac and cheese is ready. So you guys have been great. Thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful night. And again, I will post or contact you if you went or if you're one of my uh, prize giveaway winners. I appreciate those of you that place an order. The money is going to be going to, and I've posted the link a couple times. If you go visit my VIP page, it'll give you a link to place an order. It's just pamperedchef.com slash party slash food for the hungry is the URL. But again, it's listed in my group. I'm not closing it till Monday. So if there's anything you wanted to pick up, just know that 20 to 30% of whatever you purchase is going to be given to the Utah Food Bank. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Have a great evening. Peace out.